Hello everybody, welcome back to Dr. Yu Explains, where we show you how to look after your own health with explanations that everyone can understand. Today we're happy to introduce everybody my lovely anatomy poster. Now this is a poster that I've had ever since first year undergraduate. Yes, I am a huge nerd. But today, using this poster, we're gonna help you understand how to measure your own blood pressure and just why it's so important. Here we first have to understand what exactly is blood pressure? Well, any fluid that's in a container will always be pushing on the walls of the container. For us, the blood that we contain in our blood vessels is constantly pushing on the walls of the blood vessels. And that's it, that's what blood pressure is. We only care about blood pressure in our arteries, the vessels in red, because that's where the blood pressure is higher and can cause the most damage. You might also hear about systolic or diastolic blood pressure. So the systolic blood pressure is the higher number where the heart is squeezing. The diastolic blood pressure is the lower number where the heart is relaxed. Now, why do we care about blood pressure? Well, pretend that this plastic bag is your blood vessels and the air inside is your blood. What happens if I exert a lot of pressure on it? That's an aneurysm. What about even more pressure? That's a ruptured aneurysm. I certainly don't want something like this happening in my brain or my heart or anywhere else in my body for that matter. That's why we control our blood pressure. Now, contrary to popular belief, we actually can't tell when our blood pressure is high or low. It's more likely, for example, that your headache is causing your high blood pressure as opposed to your high blood pressure causing your headache. So if we can't tell what our blood pressure is by ourselves, we measure it with a blood pressure monitoring device. Of course, you can go into your family doctor's office to get your blood pressure monitored, just like this patient is doing on the cover of this book. But it turns out that when you take your blood pressure in the clinic, the average blood pressure is gonna be much higher for most people than it normally is. And we don't care about that. We care about what your blood pressure normally is when you're at home. So the best thing to do according to the 2020 Canadian Hypertension or High Blood Pressure Guidelines is to actually go ahead and take your blood pressure at home. Now before we get started, it's important for you to understand when during the day to take your blood pressure. That's important because your blood pressure varies throughout the day depending on what you're doing. For example, can you guess what was the highest blood pressure ever recorded? Okay, time's up. It's 480 over 350. That was in a healthy young person who was doing a double leg press. So as you can see, blood pressure varies throughout the day depending on what you're doing. The best and most consistent time to do your blood pressure is first thing in the morning, just after you've woken up, before you've had your coffee or tea, and before doing anything else. for Dr. Yu. Now you don't have to do it that early. So in terms of how to measure your blood pressure, first you need to get yourself a blood pressure monitoring device. You can get it from any pharmacy. Here, I have mine. Now when we talk about blood pressure, we're usually talking about blood pressure that we measure in what's called the brachial artery. We wanna make sure that the cuff is the right size for our arm. Because if we use a cuff that's too big for our arm, then that will artificially drop the blood pressure. If we use a cuff that's too small for our arm, then that will artificially increase the blood pressure. So now we're gonna just insert our arm into the cuff. Some of them have little arrows that point to the middle of this groove here. And you wanna make sure that this groove is aligned with this arrow. Notice how I'm placing my cuff over a bare arm. Ideally, you don't want the cuff to be over any clothing because that could distort your blood pressure. And you also don't want your blood pressure cuff to be too tight. You want to be able to fit two fingers inside your cuff. So that's pretty good. So when I'm taking my blood pressure, I want to make sure that this cuff is at heart level, okay? If your arm is higher than the level of your heart, then your blood pressure is going to be artificially higher. If your arm is lower than the level of your heart, then your blood pressure is going to be artificially lower. So really what that means is when you're sitting in a chair, you can just have your arm on a table. Other considerations is that you definitely want to be sitting because that helps you relax. You want to make sure your back is supported. Make sure that the edge of the cuff is at least a couple centimeters away from the crease of your elbow. 
Another consideration is to make sure that your feet are flat on the floor and that you don't cross your legs. Finally, don't talk or move when you're doing your blood pressure. So with those considerations in mind, we can get started. If possible, you wanna make sure that you're not in pain and you don't have a full bladder when you're doing your blood pressure. A full bladder can increase your blood pressure by 10 to 20 millimeters of mercury. And pain can even increase your blood pressure by up to 30 millimeters of mercury. You'll also notice that I only measure the blood pressure in my right arm. I didn't measure the blood pressure in my left arm. And usually you shouldn't have to worry about which arm you're measuring your blood pressure in. They should be fairly equal on both sides. But if the systolic blood pressure, the higher blood pressure, differs between your left arm and your right arm by more than 20 millimeters of mercury or whatever number that makes you worried, that's something to talk with your doctor about. And that's it. Usually one blood pressure reading isn't gonna be able to tell you what your blood pressure actually is. And usually the first blood pressure reading somebody takes when they're sitting down like this is always gonna be a little bit too high. So I'd recommend you take three readings and take the average of them, or if your first one is exceedingly high, then just throw that number out and take the average of your last two readings. I tell all my patients to record their blood pressures every morning for at least two weeks, because that way we can get a sense of the trend in their blood pressures over time. And really the average blood pressure over time is what's gonna be able to help us get an accurate sense of what your blood pressure actually is. And finally, what happens if you don't have a blood pressure cuff? Not to worry, because your doctor can usually order what's called a 24-hour blood pressure monitoring device, which will give you a very accurate blood pressure reading. Here in Alberta, Canada, you can go to your local fire station and get an accurate blood pressure reading. I wouldn't trust the blood pressure machines in the pharmacies and the drugstores. So there you have it, everybody. That was our episode on blood pressure, what it is, and how to measure it yourself. Now, to help me maintain my own blood pressure at the healthy level, please hit the like button and submit to my channel for more easy-to-understand explanatory videos on how you can look after your own health.